welcome to our online service here at Solid Rock Drada. Uh, we've got a special service for you today. Now we are meeting uh, at Ballymckenny Road Drada at 10 a.m. and at 12 noon. Uh, but if you can't make it or if you want to just revisit what was said or what was going on, welcome to the online service. Uh, we've got a special speaker today, uh, Dana Holloman, who worked as a youth director and missionary with us here for quite a number of years, is back over in Ireland this weekend and is preaching at Solid Rock and also sharing in this online service. So I invite you to worship with us and I invite you to hear the word as Dana delivers it. Father, just come and meet with us now in our worship, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Solid Rock. It's exciting to be here with you. I'm um, happy to be home and back in Drada. Um, I just want to also say happy Mother's Day. I'm here today to do the online preaching and so um, I, I believe that I've got a word for you today and I'm so excited to share. But first off I want to um, just really say um, I am excited about a new project that I've been working on for quite a long time. Some of of you are aware of it, some of you, of you are not, um, but um, single-handed is finally being launched. And you ask, what is single-handed? Single-handed is a, a place where I really want to come in um, and empower, inspire, and encourage single parents and their children. And so through many um, different ways and venues of, of being able to minister and reach um, young, young, old, um, whatever our story is, as single parents, um, we want them to experience restoration, healing, and love that will impact their world. Um, a lot of times in my life, I've seen so many single parents um, for whatever reason, maybe through death, maybe through mistakes, maybe through um, whatever their situation is, um, divorce, um, they they lose hope and they lose um, a part of who they are. And so single-handed is a place where we can come in and, and and inspire them to, you know, parents to find themselves and children to um, find a place because um, sometimes it's very hard in juggling back and forth to different parents or maybe they've had a loss. And so, uh, you know, I'm stepping in um, through single-handed to say we want to help you. I know in America, um, three in five American children live in families headed by an unwed mother. And so that's just one statistics of many others. Um, the United States is 23% um, households are, are run by single parents. And in the, U the UK, 21%. Um, and so we've got a high number um, throughout Europe, throughout Ireland, throughout um, America, throughout the the world where we find that so many children around the world globally are affected um, one way or another by uh, single parent households. About 19 million children below the age of 18 live with a single parent, and that is that's tough. And I've lived that life. I've I've raised my daughter, and so now I'm ready to give back. And so that's why we kick off single-handed. And you know, single-handed. Um, uh, some of our future goals is is being able to coach personal coaching through um, with the parents with. Um, with the kids, with the teenagers, and, and being able to kind of get them back on their feet and, and helping them to find hope again. Um, we also will be doing uh, uh, hosting workshops and conferences and um, motivating, uh, motivational um, conferences. And so I'm really, really excited about Single Handed and where it's going and, and who it's going to affect. And I really pray if you know someone that could be affected by this, that they could be inspired by single-handed, please um, send them my information um, and, and, and you'll see um, the information where they can get a hold of me through email, through um, social media. Single-handed is, is, you know, in, in every platform um, so that we can um, reach as many as possible. Um, another future goal that, that um, I really would like to have, and, and, and it's a huge goal, but I would love to start a um, res resort center. And so my, my vision vision is to see one started in the States and also see one started in Ireland. So this is not just a one place or the other, but um, since I'm back and forth, I would love to see two resort centers started eventually at some point. And, you know, and God, the, the, the scripture that I'm, I'm basing this off of um, is Matthew 19, 26. With men, this is impossible. With me, it is absolutely impossible. It's taken me years to even launch single-handed. 
But with men, this is impossible. With God, all things are possible. And I'm really believing that the money is going to come in to be able to get these resort centers, to be able to get the, you know, purchase the land and purchase the buildings and, and, and everything that is needed, but also being able to um, accomplish um, these these goals so that we can reach more people throughout this world and, and, and really see a difference made in the lives of so many. I'm really excited. And for more information, um, you can go to Single Handed. Um, it, it will be under all this, the social media platforms under Single Handed Movement. Um, or you can go under DanaHollemanMinistries.com. And, um, or you can email me for more information at singlehandedmovement at gmail.com or DanaHollemanMinistries at gmail.com as well. Um, Partner with me today and let's see this happen. How can you partner? Um, you can give financially. You can um, commit to praying. Or if you want to be part of, of helping with um, many of the um, different conferences and events and workshops that, that we have planned, if you want to help make that happen, then please get in touch with me. And um, I would love um, to partner with you today. And just keep us in prayer, keep um, single-handed in prayer, and let's reach the world um, for God's glory. Um, so let's get on into the message today. Um, I'm really excited um, because it is Mother's Day, and uh, Mother's Day is always a fun day. It's always a, a great day. Um, in my life, it is, um, and many people, though, it is not. Um, many people have, maybe they've lost their mom or they've... Um, um, they didn't have a good experience with their mom, and, and for that, my heart breaks. Um, but um, I, I enjoy Mother's Day because it's a day where I usually will take a time out and um, just do what I want to do for that day. And uh, Kayla is very good with always taking care of me on Mother's Day. And um, uh, except for this year, she told me that uh, she's not celebrating Irish Mother's Day, only American Mother's Day, which I thought was a bit cheeky of her, but um, it is what it is. I'm still excited to be here um, and, and to be with you today. So today, if I um, had to um, label or title my message, it would, called, it would be called A Deep Love. Um, when we think of a mother, when we think of of deep love, what do we think of? We think of someone that cares for us um, deeply, that that they um, care for us unconditionally, that they um, love and nurture and 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 you know just. Uh, embrace us. Um, and so when I think of my mom or when I think of me being a mother, um, I think of how um, unconditionally I love my daughter. Um, and I also want to not just emphasize that it's for the mothers because the dads love as well. Um, I hate, the, the one thing I do hate about the whole Mother Father's Day kind of thing is that we, we kind of single out and we make this big deal about the one parent when really it's, it's both. Our, our dads love us too. And, and so um, when I think of my dad loving me or my mom loving me, um, I think that they, they love me the same. But I also take that into a spiritual realm where I think my Heavenly Father loves me um, probably, well, I know so, and it's not a probably, um, more than my earthly parents could ever love me. And they love, you know, God loves me even more unconditionally than even my parents could ever um, love me. Um, and, and, and I embrace that deep love. And what are some characteristics of a good mom? Um, when we think, when, when, I, when I think back to my daughter, when I first held her um, at the hospital that, that first time, when they handed her to me, I looked at my baby and I thought, wow, I would give anything for my daughter. I would give my life. I would sacrifice anything. And that's what a mom does. And when, when you're carrying that child um, for several months, you, 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 it's just naturally you form a bond between the child and the mother. 
um, and, and once you birth them and you go through that pain and that suffering, um, you, there's even a deeper bond because you've, you've went through that, you've got through that. And oftentimes like my daughter's 19 now. So I don't think about the pain that I went through when she was being born. I think about all of the good years that we've had together and how she is becoming the woman herself. And, 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 um, I, I I don't focus on that pain, but that pain is what strengthened our love and what strengthened our caring. And so, a characteristics of of a good mom is is someone who will love and care for their child, someone who will teach and they will train their child. Um, it says to train up the, your child um, in the way of the Lord, and they will not depart. Um, a good mom will nu nurture and discipline. Um, a good mom will be a good role model to our kids. We'll do the best that we can. We don't always get it perfect, but we aim to be a good role model. We want our kids um, to, to know the, the, from right and wrong. Um, we take care of our home as a good mom. We take care of our home. And then we also take care and help our husband or our, our boyfriends or, our, you know, our, our partners. And, and we do that because um, we want to have a home that is, is strong and, and caring. And so um, I, I'm really excited about um, looking through these characteristics and when I think of a mom and when I think of a good mom throughout the Bible, I was, I was just sitting back and thinking, you know, wh who was I going to talk, talk about today and who could be a great example of what a good mom was in, in, in relevance of these characteristics that I, I want to kind of expand on. And when I think of that, I, I think of um, the mother of Moses and how strong and courageous she was. Her name was Jacobed, Jacobed. I always say it wrong, so excuse me on that. But um, she was such a courageous mom. And in Exodus 2, you'll find um, where it talks about um, a little bit about who she was and how courageous she is. And um, this is what it says in, in Exodus 2. Um, chapter 2. And a man of the house of Levi went and took as wife a daughter of Levi. So the woman conceived and bore a son. And when she saw that she, he was a beautiful child, she hid him three months. But when she could no longer hide him, she took an ark of bulrushes for him, dabbed it with asphalt and pitch put the child in it, and laid it in the reeds by the river's bank. And his sister stood afar off to know what would be done to him. Then the daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river, and her maiden walked along the riverside. And when he saw the ark among the needs, she sent her, her maid to get it. And when she opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the baby wept. So she had compassion on him and said, This one of the Hebrews' children. This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call a nurse from you from the heaven, from the Hebrew woman, that she may nurse the child for you? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. So the maiden went and called the child's mother. Then Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child away and nurse him for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed him, and the child grew, and she brought him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. So she called him Moses, saying, Because I drew him out of the water. And so I find this amazing, and it doesn't actually, in that scripture, you you say, well, it doesn't actually mention the mother, but I just, you know, let's just break that down a little bit. This this lady, she had this child, and, and a little bit of the, the back history is um, Pharaoh had, had put an order out that all of the, the boys, um, would, you know, that were... Um, uh, you know, the toddler boys, they were to be executed. And, and so you have this mom that says, I don't want my child to be killed. All of the, the boys born are to be, to be killed because he was afraid that 
one of these guys were going to grow up and take his place, that they were going to do better than him. And so you have to think, you have this this king that is, is making such rash decisions, but you have this mom that is so fearless, that she is so courageous, that she thinks out a plan of, I've got this child. I had my baby boy. I look at him and I, I think, this is my baby boy. I love him so much. And I don't want him to be killed. So let me divide, you know, come up with a plan in order to keep him alive. And this is sacrificial for her. So she's not only fearless and courageous, she's also sacrificing. She's also showing her daughter what it is to be a good mom. She's training her child without even putting too much effort into that. It's not like you have to sit down and, and drill it into them. She She's by living by example and she's looking at this baby boy. And I can only imagine what she's thinking as she looks at this baby and she says, this is going to be a boy that that is going to do great exploits. This is going to be my son that is going to do mighty things. I'm going to speak life over my son. I'm not going to allow him to die. I'm going to speak life, not death. I'm going to speak that he is going to do many exploits, that he is going to do uh, mighty things, that he is going to make a big difference in this world. And he's going to affect many, many people. I can just see her thinking because I, I could imagine... As a mom, that's what I was thinking for my daughter, that when she, as she grows up, I'm going to teach her, I'm going to train her, I'm going to love her, I'm going to nurture her, I'm going to, you know, you know, show her the way I want to be a good role model. But my main goal in doing all of that was to raise a child that is going to make a difference in tomorrow. And that's what many of us are doing. And so this mom, she, she takes this baby boy and she says, I have to come up with a plan. She does that and she tells her daughter, you know, I'm going to make this basket and I'm going to put him in the, the river and I'm going to hope for the best. I'm going to pray for the best. She knew exactly what she was doing. She knew exactly what her plan was. And I think it was amazing how she had the strength to actually fulfill it. You see, when we compare ourselves to this mom, how many of us have kids that we say we know they're going to do great exploits, but maybe we're holding them back? Maybe we, we want to protect them and we're working too hard to protect them. We're working too hard to um, keep them in this little bubble that we're not allowing them to, you know, we're not allowing ourselves to be strong and courageous and, and, and teach our kids and, and strengthen them and let them go. We want them to do great exploits, but we want them to do it while they're in this little bubble. And, and I, I can appreciate this mom because in her strength, she says, I have to sacrifice. I have to sacrifice my son so that he might live, so that he might do great things, that he might do great exploits in this world, that he might make a difference. You see, so she puts him in this, this basket and puts him in the water. And, he's tell, and she tells his, her daughter, he says, you watch her. You watch the baby, you watch what happens, you watch, you know, you watch him and keep an eye, make sure he's safe. And after three months, she lays him in this basket. And I can only imagine after three months, she held him, she nurtured him, she, she cared for him. And after three months, she laid him in the basket, not knowing the end result. She had hoped for the result that she wanted, but she didn't know the end result. And that's what we have to remember. She didn't know what was going to happen. She put him in this basket, not knowing 100% what was going to happen. And, and, and she puts him in and he floats down the river and she has the sister watching after and Pharaoh's daughter just happens to come down to the river. I would venture to say, because if I was her, I would have done the same thing. She knew Pharaoh's daughter was going to come down. She knew that there was some kind of routine, that there was some kind of process. Somebody was going to find this baby. 
And so anyway, the, the baby's, I can imagine the baby's floating down and, and Pharaoh's daughter hears a cry and says, what is that? And grabs the basket and opens it and says, oh my goodness, it's a baby. And it just happened to be that the sister was right there and said, hey, will I go find someone to nurse him? She said, yeah. It ended up being the perfect storm, so to speak. It ended up being a great um, thing because her son was able to live. She was able to nourish him. She was able to watch him grow up. And he lived under the king's roof. And as we know, what did Moses become? We know that Moses became a, a great man, a man that did great exploits, a man that did gr mighty things throughout the nations. He made a difference in this world because of the sacrifice of his mom, because of the sacrifice of, of who she was, because of her courage, because of her strength. But I don't think that it was just because of the mom. I think the mom loved God so much that she trusted that God was going to take care of him. I think that she believed that God loved us so much that he would make a way when there seemed to be no way. I believe that she trusted in God so much that she knew her heavenly father would not let her down. That her heavenly father had a purpose for her child. And so I want to wrap this around that, that we may find strength in ourselves, but really our strength comes from God. Our strength comes from, from our Savior. Our strength comes from the um, uncondition unconditional love that God has for us. And I find that amazing. I find that um, we want to do great things and we want to do mighty things for our Father. We want to do exploits and we want to see our children do exploits for our, our Heavenly Father because of what tomorrow holds, because of what today holds, you know, not because of what yesterday holds, but because of what today and tomorrow hold. I believe that when we when we really look at the characteristics of what a mother is, it also shows us what God is. When we look at um, the love and care, that's a great characteristics of a good mom. A good mom will love and care for their child. It, jo, um, Jacobed, she cared for her son so much, she made this basket and she put him in, in the river and let him float down, knowing that he would be found by the king's daughter. He wouldn't be executed. Yes, he was going to be raised by a different family. Yes, he was going to have the influence of a different family. But she believed that the plan that God had for him was greater than that sacrifice, than that um, point of view of him being raised by somebody else. She knew that God had a greater plan for him. And so she loved him so much that she sacrificed him and said, I want him to live, so I'm going to let him go. And some of us, we have to love our kids so much that when we know that they have a call, you know, that God has put a call on their lives. We have to let them go. And that's not easy. That's hard sometimes. When we see our kids make mistakes, we have to trust that God is going to guide them and, and lead them. He uses us to teach them and train them. But there comes a point where we have to say, you're on your own now and you have to make your decisions. And, and that's what this mom did. She, she was there to love and to care for she was there to teach him and train him and to influence him before she had to leave. You know, she helped raise him for a few years. She was there to nurture him and discipline him and being able to tell him when he's, you know, not doing right. But that means to do it with nurture, to do it by example. One thing that wrecks my head the most is when I see um, or hear that phrase, do as I say, not as I do. 
I refuse to say that because if I'm not doing it, how can I expect my child to do it? How can I, you know, expect um, others to follow me if I'm not doing it myself, if I'm not being a good role model? And so we have to learn that we are the example, that it's by our actions that our children learn, that, that, that society learns from us, that they see what we're doing in our actions. And do they line up with the word of God? Do they line up with our love for God? Are, are we saying one thing and doing another? And so we really have to, to look at that. What, you know, what kind of role model are we being? Are we taking care of our home? Or are we so busy looking at everybody else's homes and criticizing how others are doing it? Let's take care of our home, take care of, of, of the people under our roof so that we can um, continue to love and care for them and to train them and teach them and be a, a good role model and discipline them and nurture them. Um, because none of that can happen if we're not taking care of our own home, if we're not focused on our home, if we're so busy gossiping in our home about other people's homes, ouch, um, then, you know, it kind of takes away from what we're doing in our own home. And I see it all the time, you know, things that are happening within the home, it's, it's overflowing into society and what's happening. And you can always, you know, you, you can look at, at how actions of, of, I work with teenagers. So when I look at some of the teenagers, now not everything that they do reflects the parents because there's some things I did that does not reflect on my parents. There are things that my daughter's done that doesn't reflect on what I've taught her right or wrong. And, and there's, it's not everything. It's not hundred percent, but you can tell, you can tell how a child was raised. You can tell um, how they were taken care of in their home. Were they loved? Were they were they nurtured? Were they taught? Were they trained? You know, if you see a kid sitting at a dinner in a restaurant and they're picking up the, the meat with their hands, well, you know, they weren't taught to use utensils, you know? But if you see them cutting their meat, even if they're not cutting it the way that you would, they've at least been taught to use the utensils. And so we want to teach our, our kids, we want to teach our homes um, and be in our homes and take care of our homes in the, the way that we're teaching them how to use the utensils. Now, how they might use those utensils might look a little different, but at least we've taught them to use the utensils. Um, and you want to care and help um, for your husband or for, you know, your household or what, whatever is under your roof. Maybe you're not married. Maybe your, your husband or your wife died. Maybe um, you've going through a divorce. But you can still, whatever your situation, whatever your story is, look at the positive part. Look at the, uh, you know, be optimistic about the positive part of it. When I look at how um, Moses was handled, two things could have happened. She could have kept him and tried to hide him, kept him quiet, suppressed him, and hoped for the best. But what would the result have been? What would um, the, the end game have been? Would Moses have made the difference that he made had she suppressed him? I don't think so. I know God had a plan, but would that plan have been derailed? Would he have learned a different lesson? Would he have been taught differently? I think so. I think that when we go through our life, when we go through um, the situations that we go through, it makes us to be better people. I think it makes us stronger. It makes us rely on God more. And so when she relied on God and she said, wait a second, I want the best for my son and this is what I'm gonna choose to do. And she put him in a, a basket and let him go down the river so that he might have life. I think it was a powerful move on her part. I believe that she was led in, in to do that because of her trust in God, because of her faith in God. I believe that she, um, she made the right decision. 
She didn't know what the end result was going to be, but she did believe in God and she did have faith in God. And that's where we want to have faith in God. When we have a deep love for God, we're willing to sacrifice. We're willing um, to love and to nurture. And in some of those ways of love and nurturing, it's sacrificial. When we look at a deep love, we're looking at a caring relationship. When we have a deep love, we're looking at being obedient. When we love God so much that we'll do anything for him, no matter what, we will move to the ends of the earth. We'll, you know, travel wherever you want, you know, you have to travel. You have to give up luxuries or you have to, you know, maybe sell everything you have and move to a different country. I, I was just in a missions conference not long ago and I, I was reminded of so many of, of my friends that are missionaries and they gave up so much. They sold everything to go to a country um, that maybe didn't have everything that they needed or everything that maybe not even clean water and and that's sacrificial I, I always said thank god that he sent me to ireland um because at least we had tesco and we have clean water and um and while it was hard and there was lonely times and in, in moving by myself until i met people and, and became you know grounded in the country it, there was tough times and there is tough times but at least I had clean water. And I think about my friends that that sacrificed and, and they don't have clean water even today. Um, or they, you know, they maybe don't have the right health care or they don't have, you know, they, they've given up so much. But why do they do it? Because they love God so much that they want to share that love and they want to share who God is and they want to share what God is all about. And, and I believe that, that this mother did that with Moses. Because she raised a, a, a man in the end, even if she wasn't there for all of the years, that did many great exploits. That he did a great movement, that he was fearless, and that he was courage. He had mighty courage. And so he did mighty great things. And because of her actions, he was a, a man that, that made a difference in our life today wasn't perfect, but he made many, many, many exploits for God. And so today I just want to re-emphasize that being a good mom is about loving and caring, about teaching and training and nurturing and discipline, being a good role model, taking care of our home, and caring and helping for our partners, our spouses, or um, our families. I believe that's what God wants us to do today. I believe that God wants us to, to find the capability to open our hearts and love deeply, to love each other, to love our families unconditionally, but to find a place where we can love God deeply, that we would love him and we would allow him to love and care for us unconditionally that we would allow him to teach and train us, that we would allow him to nurture us and discipline us when we're wrong. Today, just when you leave, when you turn off this uh, online teaching or, or whatever, just when, you, when you, the service is over, I hope that what you gain from it is that God loves you and he wants you to love him back. Well, thank you to Dana for bringing the word for us today. I just want to share a few notices with you. We do have a prayer meeting tomorrow night at the church premises on Bally McKenney Road. That is, as always, from 8 p.m. until 9 p.m. It's not a midweek service. There's no sermon. There's no program. It's just coming before God and seeking his face in prayer for one hour from 8 p.m. till 9, 9 p.m. on a Monday night. Uh, we also have an event taking place on Thursday night. Uh, that is a women's night. And they have a guest speaker coming who is Renee Clanton. 
Uh, that's at 7.30 p.m. And please see any of our women's leaders for more details on that. And also then on Saturday, we have a special event. Moyo Shalanke is uh, holding, we all, many of us know and love Moyo, and he is holding a fundraiser for Down Syndrome Ireland that is taking place, uh, starts Saturday morning, 11 a.m. and runs until 2 p.m. There's going to be a sale of pre-loved items. There's also going to be spot prizes, and there's going to be tea and coffee and cakes and all sorts of stuff. So I encourage you to get down to the church building next Saturday from 11 until 2 p.m. And we do, of course, continue with our online content. Our Take Fives continue to go up. A five-minute daily devotional every day. We put it online uh, from Monday to Saturday. We have our online Sunday service, of course. Goes up about nine o'clock every Sunday morning. We have a midweek Bible study upon this rock. We're looking at Mark's Gospel and going through it verse by verse. That's on Wednesday night online at 7.30. And we also, every day of the week, including Sunday, we post up a one-minute prayer and scripture uh, for Ukraine. And uh, you, again, you can, uh, you, can, you can pray that with us. You can, it's on TikTok. It's on our Facebook page. And also, if you want to get hold of the book, speak to any pastors of the church and find out how you can get your own copy of the book with the daily prayer for Ukraine for 365 days of the year. What we're trying to get to as many people as possible to pray together in unity and to see God do great things. So there's there's all those different events that are happening. We do, of course, continue with our 24-7 prayer. And uh, on Friday, St. Patrick's Day marked three years of unbroken prayer every hour of every day. And we're continuing with that. We have an online rota, and you can find that rota on our church website, www.solidrock.ie, or our Facebook page, Solid Rock Drogheda. Also, thank you for your giving to the church. So many people give online now, and we really do appreciate that. And uh, if you're not already giving online, I would encourage you to do so and be a part of what God is doing. Uh, you know, it's a wonderful thing. God doesn't need our money, but he chooses to allow our giving to be a part of what he's doing in the earth. And we would invite you to join us in that. And so you can get the, the details. They're up on the screen now. Uh, or they're also on our website. Uh, you can also give by PayPal. There's a PayPal link on the church website. Uh, if you prefer to give by cash or check, we have offering basket, baskets on the back walls and you can come to our, any of our in-person services or any events in the church and pop your envelope with your tithe or offering in into those boxes and it all goes to the work of the Lord, however you choose to give. So thank you for your faithfulness in the matter of giving and receiving. And now it simply remains for me to uh, share the grace uh, with you to close our online service. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Thank you.